Yeah. Uh, Pastor Kingsley, you've, you've, right. you've talked a lot about uh, relationship over the years. Uh, I'm also privileged to counsel a lot of people. Most pastors counsel mm -hmm. yes. people. Um, <laughs> I, I think I want to just pick some wisdom from that. Um, what are the top three things you notice affect marriages like negatively that people can you know, work on, especially this pandemic period? There are some things you might have noticed that affected people. And I believe that our relationships, if they're not in good shape, our ministries can't be in good shape. Yes. Our lives can't be in good shape. So can you speak to that again? Um, thank you once more for having me here. Um, for relationships, sorry for leaders, um, three things would be number one, knowledge. Just like I said during the, the seminar, um, many people just believe that, you know, things can work anyhow. I did, I did an experiment in my church. I took the guitar. I don't know where is the guitar here. Might be there. Okay, so you see it here. I took the guitar in my church and I asked, everybody was laughing and I asked people, what are the chances that I'll play a good music with this guitar? Everybody laughed. They said zero. You know why? Because I, I don't know how. I don't know how. You see, you can't just succeed at something without learning how. Many people just enter marriage and hope it will work. They say, you know, the one that worked, the one that work, we don't know, it's just by chance. No, it's not by chance. It's what's destroying Africa. We like luck too much. You can learn. So, how much learning have you put in? In fact, the areas you are not good at are the areas you need to learn more. So, don't go into marriage hoping it will work. Always learn. Always learn. Very important. That's one. Um, number two, um, timing. Sorry. For you as a leader, Pastor, why I talked about this earlier too. For you as a leader, you must... Program family time. If you don't do that, it, it, your family life won't be solid. Ministry is demanding. You are, you are literally busy. If you want to be busy 24 hours in ministry, yeah. you can be busy 24 hours. Literally. So you have to schedule time to bond with family. Pastor Yemi talked about that earlier. That your children can even hate ministry because of the way you are doing it. So schedule time. Then the third one, um, intimacy. And that has been what me and my wife have been trying to work on for, for a while recently to help people. What we believe is that any marriage can work if the intimacy is good. What breaks marriage is not adultery. It's not money. It's not sex. What breaks marriage is a lack of intimacy. What you will notice is that when there's strong intimacy, marriages survive things that break other marriages. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. When the companionship, the friendship, the unity... The oneness, the understanding. Once it's solid, that marriage can survive infidelity, infertility, insufficient funds, in-laws, interference. It can survive anything. But once the intimacy is not strong, any of these things can break a marriage. Infertility. Oh, we have married for three years, no children. Close. Because there's no, the union is not strong. It can't take the pressure. Once there's insufficient funds, oh, he's no more making money. I've seen all kinds of things break marriages. And it's never the thing that really broke it. It's because there was no strong foundation. So build intimacy. And that's a whole cost by itself. Okay. Yes, thank you. Build intimacy. But Once the friendship are, is tight. Are there things you guys do to, in terms of you building say? the intimacy? Can, what you, do we can do? you give us some Oh, some tips. Some yeah. Tips. Um, that you do. That we do, yes. Basically, like, you can notice that we are here together now. Mm -hmm. we, we in, see, it, building intimacy must be intentional. intentional. Because proximity doesn't guarantee intimacy. Yep. You can be together and not be together. You can wear and go and not be cooperating. <laughs> we saw one couple one Sunday morning, they were fighting. We saw a car swerving on highway. We followed the car. When we got close to them, we saw a couple. Two of them were fighting for the steering. Husband and wife. They were wearing and go, but they were not in agreement. <laughs> the, on highway, the car was swerving and there was a baby in the car. Mm -hmm. So, um, you were intentional. So, you can see, for instance, we're everywhere. Many people, they grow. Nobody's Get, goes away from their spouse. We grow away from our spouse. So it happens gradually. You are going somewhere, you leave her behind. She's going somewhere, she leaves you behind. You know? So one person is growing differently, or the other person is growing differently. If you are coming for conferences like this, bring your, your spouse. spouse. She should hear what you are hearing. Sometimes a woman's interpretation of what Pastor Yemi taught is, is different, different from a man's interpretation. And Correct. those two interpretations together is what Next. gives you a balanced view. That's right. So That's right. be intentional. <laughs> On that thing we do... Another thing we do is that when we usually get home, most times, you know, um, we stay in the car together. So we don't just go into the house. Because once we enter the house, children is there, TV is there, cooking is there, everything is, we, don't, we will not talk. Just so when we get home, everybody go inside, we just sit down in the car. The car is a small place. So we must just talk. How are you? What's happening? This, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. It catch up. Number three, always ask yourselves, are you happy? You know, 
interview your spouse once. Are you okay? Are you happy? Is there anything you want to be doing? We have those conversations because there are some things in your spouse's mind that they don't feel they can tell you. Hmm. So if you don't ask, sit them down and ask, have that conversation, you will think your wife is happy. But the asking should be friendly. Oh, yes, your friendly is not war. Not apostolic asking. <laughs> is there anything it's in your war. mind that you yeah, want to Yeah, it's tell? not war. It's, it's a casual. <laughs> you see, when the friendship is already there, talking is easy. The reason why communication is hard for many couples is that they are not even friends. friends. So every, every communication looks like conflict. <laughs> well, it should not be so. All right? So there are many, many, many things like that. But building intimacy, like I said, should be a priority. And there are levels of intimacy. There's spiritual, physical, mental, and all that, all that. Pastor, the mm -hmm. questions are how much? <laughs> enormous, okay? But yes. let's see how somebody says here, how can I balance work with family? Quickly, just a statement. How can I balance work with family? Okay, mm -hmm. boundaries. Setting boundaries. Setting time limits. Okay. So know when work stops, know when family starts. Or have specific family time. Like I said, have specific time you spend with family. Specific time you spend with children. Specific time, you know, if you don't program, especially when you get busier in life, you don't, you don't do things anymore as how, how it goes. Because work, we always want to take priority. So if you don't schedule it, it won't happen. Schedule it. That, like oh, once in a month, month, a date with your Mondays or spouse, Tuesdays, yes. Or a date with the 4 family. 4 p.m. And it must be there. And everybody must Claire. know. So in case you yes. forget as a pastor, yes. they will say it's our They don't date, fix appointments for time. you at that time. Yeah. They don't fix appointments for you at that time. Things like that. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to run through. Uh, how much does it cost to pay your media guys? Okay. Um, like I said, you don't have to spend so much. Start with, you learn some things, then start with what you need the most. You know, whether it's um, camera or whatever. Now, if you don't want to do full camera, your phone, if you get a very good phone, you can record and edit. You can even do editing on your phone. All right? So start with what you can afford. Then grow from there. So there's no fixed amount. It's based on your capacity. And you're growing that. Yes, thing. you know, and what you can do. So don't, don't try to hire many people. Especially at the beginning, it, it will just waste you, cost you so much money. It's like, it's like a young church. You have volunteers doing so many things. Yes. As that church grows, you're not professionalized. Nice it, you know? yes. So start with what you have, but start something. Start something. Okay. Uh, yes. Praise the Lord. Somebody says, is, is it advisable for two individuals who have different values to marry, though they are in love with each other? They both have different areas of importance. It depends on my values. By values, being compatible doesn't mean both of you have to be similar. It just means both of you have to be able to get along. So if it's values, values talking about character, honesty, integrity, the values must be the same. But the interest in life doesn't have to be the same. My wife doesn't necessarily like football so much. She watches it because I like football. Do you understand? Yeah. So values doesn't mean, oh, we must both like cooking. We must, no, that's not what it means. It means real values, honesty, Service to mankind. Me, I knew I was called to ministry. My whole job is around service. In fact, I tell my wife, I don't want to get to the stage where I have to do other businesses to survive. I don't want to get there. Mm. Even if I do investment, but I don't want it to be like, oh, I need it to survive. Because the moment I start putting my eyes somewhere else, service to mankind is what I'm here for. I want to make all my money serving human beings. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yep, yep, yep. So values, those are things I mean by not that uh, she, she, she must not like football, I must like football, she must like to go, no. So you can be different people, but value important things together. If those values are not the same, then you don't marry that person because the core of the relationship has a problem. Okay, uh, this one is <clears throat> it's a bit sensitive, but uh, God will give us mm -hmm. wisdom. Do you have an extra microphone there? In case praise need to speak to this also. Uh, it says, a popular preacher said that adultery pegs your ministry, that once committed, you can never grow your ministry anymore. Okay, that's clearly not right now. We know that from Scripture that um, uh, most of the fathers of faith, especially in the Old Testament... Um, had those errors. God forgives. God restores. So I don't know where we got, I don't know where scriptural background for adultery destroys your means. Now, of course, it will have impact in your ministry. Every sin has consequence. So it will have impact in your ministry, but it doesn't mean you can never do ministry. It doesn't mean you can never, there are even some fathers of faith in our country that are very significant today, but they had a past where they had something. So I don't think um, adultery cancels anybody's ministry. But can you encourage any leader here that made that mistake and genuinely wants to be restored. Are there things the person can be? Because, oh. because the challenge is um, most people don't know how to get out of things yes. and they fall into it again and again and yes. it becomes a trend in their lives and that damages everything. Interestingly, Pastor, I've been bothered about the body of Christ. We don't really have good crisis management strategies. It's so sad. In fact, whenever somebody even falls into a sin, you notice that other pastors are not even shooting the person. They don't know what, because they don't know how to react. First of all, there's no, there's no principle that we must post on social media to address our family problem. Yeah. All right? If we have a family problem, we don't have to post it. The people of the world you are trying to impress, they will never be impressed. They don't like church. That's right. And they, they do worse things, but they don't post it. 
then we, the church, we feel we owe the world a public statement. Why? We can owe our church family a statement, but we don't owe posting on social media. I don't owe anybody. So those are not things. I don't see where people get those things from. It's not scriptural. Family matters should be dealt with inside the family. Then number two, um, if a, a man is caught in a crisis, the people that are important are the people he reports to. And the how people they, he yes. reports to, that's like a mentor yes, or, or his pastor or, or friends or something. Yes, or or yes, a people that can, that can act, you know, so it's not even anybody that needs to know. Yep. It's not that just anybody that's here on the streets. No, it's the people that can do something about it, that are in a position to correct him and restore him, that should know. All right? So those are the things. I have a, like I said, it's a full message, you know. I actually wanted to preach it here, even though I told him to do media. There are four people involved in any crisis case or sexual scandal. There are four people involved. Number one is Satan. His own mission there is to strike the shepherd and the sheep with scatter. So the real interest of Satan is the sheep. He wants to eat all the sheep. So he, he um, reputes the shepherd. the shepherd. The second person there is the crowd, the audience, the people we are doing posts for. Those ones, they are prejudiced. Their own issue is not this issue. It's their former pain. They are using this issue to express. So they carry stone. They don't even know who committed the offense. <laughs> That, you know, the, I'm using the story of the woman caught in adultery. They don't know who committed the offense. They, 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 somebody has annoyed them before. Because that case, they said two people were committed adultery. They brought only one person. I don't understand. So that case was not balanced. That's Those people ought to be asking, where is the man? They didn't ask. They have carried stone. You see, something else was paining them. It's not this case. So when you post your matter, people will start saying, hey, that's our one pastor. Hey, hey. So they are hating the pastor because of what their own pastor did. They don't even know whether the story was true or not. So the crowd, they are always prejudiced. They are emotionally high. Emotionally excited. Don't, don't be moved by them. You don't owe them an explanation. In fact, the first thing Jesus did in that case was to empty the crowd. He said, concerning this case, it's only me and this woman yes. that have case. All this audience is none of your business. Stop putting mouth. What does it concern you? The third person involved there is the woman herself caught in adultery. Jesus told her, go and sin no more. So they have to put a process where it won't happen again. Go and sin no more. So accountability processes... Um, healing, that's where therapy comes in. To know why it happened in the first place, how we can stop it from happening. You can't give solution if you don't know why. You must get to the root. Why did it even happen? That's how we can stop it from happening again. again. Go and sin no more. And you can't know whether the person is truly repentant or not. It's between them and God. It's time that we tell. You can't know. So it's not your business. Then the fourth person there is God. God's stand in every case is where are your accusers? He said they've gone. He said neither do, do I, I condemn you. He said, go and sin no more. It means, number one, I don't condemn you, but I don't condone sin. I don't condemn, and I don't, but I don't condone. condone. Okay. So those are the four people involved. How do, how, how do you make your congregation engage actively with your content? A lot of pastors complain that they, they are putting things out, but even their own congregation sure, no, not is not responding. Like I told you, you must build your tribe outside your church. It's one of the best things that can happen to a pastor. When you, even your people know that you are sellable. Mm. That means regardless that of That they can that. export you. Yeah. The moment they feel they are the one helping you, there's a problem. So, um, build your content even outside the church. Now, if you are a good leader, you should be able to inspire them to engage. Okay. So, tell them outrightly. Build a culture. In, in church, the key is to build culture. So, talk about your content if you need to in church. Talk about why it's important for all of us to be social media evangelists. Why all of us need to lend our voice. You know, train and coach. It shouldn't be more of a selfish agenda. It like should be more of a kingdom a agenda. Yes. Kingdom Let agenda. them understand the reason why. Co culture is important in the church. So, that's it. Okay. Um... How long does it take to start seeing results on social media following the advice you you're, you're Oh, giving? beautiful. Forget about the time. Just keep. Keep doing it. That's the key. Time will frustrate you. If I say, no, I want it done in two months, you, after two months, you get frustrated. Do it. You are here for life. You are here for impact. Forget the time. Most of, the, most of my pages that have blown up, I did, in fact, um, my Instagram wasn't popular until one, one um, a music artist got offended at something I said and advertised me. So I didn't even know it was going to blow. Do you understand? So, if I was waiting for when it was going to blow up, I keep doing your thing. Keep pushing your truth. Sometimes an old video you've put is what that we, we even do. trend today yeah. and make you popular. But always watermark your content. So, put your name on your content because mm -hmm. it goes further than your page. That's it right. always goes further. So, when you put your name, wherever you know it gets to, they will know it's you and they'll connect you. with you. Okay. Yes. How can I deal with a very defensive and opinionated husband that thinks he's mostly right? <clears throat> okay. Um... If you have already tried confrontation, then that means that can work. Men are warriors, so you better not to confront them, better to influence them. Find out why he's like that. There's something he's chasing. People's actions are never about the actions. You need to find out what the reason behind it. When you can get to the root, 
if, he's, if he has ego issues, if he's threatened, you need to get him to the place where he's, he stops seeing you as a threat and starts seeing you as a friend. Once he starts seeing you as a friend, he'll be less defensive. All right? People, people, a lot of us are broken. Human beings are broken. That's the truth. So you're trying to correct a broken person. You can't tell somebody that is proud that he's proud. He will, he will show... He'll be prouder. <laughs> he'll be prouder. <laughs> he won't agree. So you must let their defenses be down. My wife said something on one of her videos. That the reason why it was, it was easy for me to toast her and marry her was that I didn't come as if I wanted to toast her. I came as a friend. When you Ooh. come down to toast you, everybody's guarding. When you come, oh, I'm a friend. Defenses are down. Then I will start bringing my ring. That, that's, like that's, 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 like that's like a snake. You came, you came. <laughs> Prince, can you say something to that? There's a microphone there. Yes, please. About this um, opinionated okay, husband, and defensive. Yes. I've had cases where a, a lady would tell me my husband has never apologized yeah. um, for 10 years of marriage, okay. 15 years. And I said, wow, your husband must be great. How yeah. great he is. You know, sometimes um, we... We were not taught to communicate, we were taught to talk. So communication is a different ballgame entirely. I've not seen anyone that you create the right strategy to communicate with who will not respond. And many a time when we're trying to correct people, we are accusatory, we are not fact-finding. So like, we, we are, instead of asking yeah, certain so questions... So if, if you attack me, I'm going to be defensive. Yeah. Right? If you are <laughs> fact-finding. So let's even assume you are sure I was the one that ate, ate the chocolate. Right? If you come around and say, I, I know you are the one who took the chocolate, I will first be, be defensive. Yes. But you can come and say, Why is oh, so it that I've been looking for this chocolate. Do you perchance know who took it yes. or something like that? Yes. Do you understand? And sometimes you want to move people, you know, you are attacking them or you are commanding them. They are going to rebel against you, especially when you're talking to your husband. Especially if that your husband is a typical African person with a cultural mentality. You know, I just got back from um, Imo State. And I was talking to Anglican priests, and they were saying to me that the male child is more important than the female, female child. child. Yes. And these are custodians of the of gospel. The, yeah. Right? The male child. So I'm, yeah. So, so, what, I so, what, so what did you do? Did you, did you shout? Of course, we, we, <laughs> you trust me now. I have four girls. What, what we what had to, right? we had to. You should have, you have taken for that so, kind of So let me, let me even tell you what I did. Wow! What, now, what, what, what is the meaning of that? Hello, I knew that if I attack <laughs> yes. their belief, yes. I won't win them. Yes. Guess what I did? I bypassed their conscious resistance. Hmm. I created two scenarios. Hmm. So I said to them, if you had a daughter, you have trained the daughter to be the best pilot. Don't, um, President Joe Biden hired your daughter. Salary is a million dollars. And they have given her the option to bring her two parents in convenience fee of $10,000 for the rest of their lives. And I said, your daughter now came to you to say she doesn't want to take the offer. And you asked why. I said, because of the man he wants to marry, because she will not have time to be cooking and be taking. I said, what will you say to your daughter? All of them said, holy ghost, now he go fire them. Again. <laughs> Second thing I said to them, I asked them, I said, you said the male child is superior. I said, assume that you have two children, you didn't train the girl child, she found her way to Lagos, trained herself, became a political bigwig, and came to contest governorship. She became the first female governor in your state. This your son became a primary school teacher in a bush. It's holiday time. The two of them are inviting you for holiday. Where will you go? State house. All of them say state house. They will even carry the mail child and carry <laughs> to the state house. Case closed. For the first time, after those two analogies, they raised their hand to say we were wrong. That culture is demonic. Mm -hmm. So, that, so that means you don't way, attack people, people. Bypass conscious resistance. Jesus yes. did that a lot of time. In fact, when Nathan was correcting um, David, yes, he yes. didn't go and say, you committed it. No, he bypassed conscious resistance by creating stories. What if is you... conscious resistance? Some people are hearing that for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Please, don't... don't, don't, don't conscious resistance us. is what happens if I wanted to change the behavior. I can... And that's one of the mistakes we make. You know, I say to pastors that preaching on the pulpit is the least of your job to influence people. It's the, it's the lowest level. Right? I can... Check pornography. Porn is three minutes. Somebody watches a porn. The porn is not saying remove your shoe, begin, remove your clothes, begin to masturbate. By yourself, you will masturbate. It didn't say anything, but it's influencing you. Then you go back by yourself. Burn your data. Go again. Go again till you become hooked. Right? That's influence. Do you understand? So if I come directly, you may, I mean, in strategy, they must not see you coming. But if you go behind, you can paint a story. You can even sometimes, okay. I want to correct my daughter. I create a story that doesn't exist. But she knows I'm the one. Jesus used that a lot. The Bible will say, and the Pharisees knew that I was talking about them. 
He hmm. was bypassing conscious resistance. It's something we need to learn in communication. And please, you can also apply the sandwich model. If I want to move Pastor Midred as Pastor Kingsley, so let me act as you, right? I can say, um, sweetheart, please, can you just get up and come and hear? Right? She will do it out of respect for me. But how does that um, assist her esteem? But I can come and say, babe, you know you're the best babe in the world. I couldn't have married any other person without you. I was just wondering, my queen, you know, the way you're sitting there is good. You know, but I was wondering if you could move here because this would befit your royal status as my queen. And I want to take a selfie with you. Right? You call it toasting. Where do you, what do you think is going to happen? She will move. Tomorrow, where will she sit? Here. Because it's queen. Right? I, that's the difference between talking and communication. Talking is like 30 seconds. Communication is about three minutes. But many of us are impatient. We can't communicate. And that's why people resist you. Wow. Thank you. We'll, we'll have praise forward. At the, the last session for today is going to be Q&A. His main session will be tomorrow. So the Q&A will talk about so many things. You can watch out for that. Pastor Kingsley, in... Uh, does all business require social media, especially if your business is to cre is create to meet local market women? That is it, that every business needs social media? Oh, yes, every business needs social media, even if it's local uh, mm -hmm. women. That local woman might have a son, a daughter that is on social media. Sometimes, through social media, there are people next door to you that didn't know what you do. It's in social media they will see you and know that, ah, you live in my estate. So mm. everybody, everybody's online now. Online is the main line. Now, so online is the main line. Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, can you recommend where or what you can learn about teenage counseling? It's praise that will tell you that one. Okay. Yeah, teenage counseling. So I think we should yeah. talk about that today. If I was talking about counseling this afternoon a bit, about churches, how they can set up their counseling systems yes. and counseling itself as a principle. Okay, do you boost pay your page at earlier stage on social media? Oh, you can do that if you think. I did, at the I earlier did. stage, right? I, I didn't do that, but you can do that. Um, if you have some particular content you think you like and people will relate to it, and you've already seen the engagement on your page that it was highly engaged with, you can, yes, you can pay and boost it. It's proper to do that. It's advertisement. It's okay. Please, sir. Is marriage compulsory? Oh, clearly it's not compulsory now. You must first be happy with your life. So it's not compulsory, but it's good. Okay, somebody says, Pastor Yemi, you spoke about accountability. How can one get uh, who to be accountable to? It starts with even the kind of friends you move with. There's some friends. I mean, he's a friend of mine. Um, I respect him. I believe he respects me. That alone keeps you accountable. Like, if Pastor Kinsley hears about this or sees this, what will he say? It's a sense of accountability. So the kind of friends you keep, and then much more than that, um, I think we should have mentors, people that, that, we, that we can talk to. I have great mentors that my wife and I see often, uh, we talk about things to them, and they counsel with us. I remember when we were having our fourth daughter, you know, we thought it was going to be a son, you know, and we were praying for a son, actually. We had already named the son Samuel Prophet. So she was in the U.S., she was to deliver. We didn't, even, we didn't do scan, we just believed that it was a, mm. a son. And then she delivered, it was Samuel, you know, like... Samuela. <laughs> Samuela. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they told me in the hospital that, ah, the name, ah, I can't give me a... <laughs> So we just, you know, we, we just pick names. Now, when we go back, I want to see one of our mentors. And as, she, as he carried the daughter, he said, there's a plan for the future of this generation. It looks like women will do much more than men. And, and he started prophesying. So uh, mentorship does a lot. It's not about uh, mouth. It's about somebody that can talk to you, somebody that can correct you, somebody that can even guide you. Okay, so I, I wanted to do that. Find and you prayerfully don't don't do like Lot. Don't be looking for someone that has a big ministry. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. Fine, we need results, but let the Holy Ghost guide you. Many of us are supposed to be protegees of many people now, but it's uh, covetousness that will not allow us. We are looking for what does not exist, and by the time we are ready, that person will not be ready for us anymore. Okay, uh, friends, and your wife is also your accountability partner, your spouse, your husband. Especially if you're vulnerable and tell them things. They, they ask you questions. Accountability starts with your agreeing to it. That, why am I out late? Can I tell my wife why I'm, why I'm out late? Can my wife check the people calling me? If you, don't, if you can't sort that out, then you can't be accountable. You can't. Why are you having a password that is like the key to heaven? You know, something that 
Even you forget when you have to open your phone. Why? Why can't your wife or your husband pick your phone? Or your phone rings you in the toilet to run out of the toilet with boxers to pick as a pastor. It's not okay. So uh, I think it's a principle. When the principle is there in your system, you will find people to be accountable to. I think we should stop there, but let me just pick one. Um, okay. Sir, what can you do when you feel that your wife do not respect you enough, but inward you found out that... I don't understand. But inward you found out that it's not yourself. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, can somebody help me? You have a microphone. What can you do when you feel that your wife do not respect you enough, but inward you found out that... I think... Sorry, sir. I think it wasn't typed rightly. So the person says, um, from experience and from conversations, it looks like the wife is not the problem, but that uh, the wife is finding it very difficult to respect or honor him as a wife. Okay. Yeah, maybe you should talk to, speak to what would make a woman not to respect the man. Maybe that can help. Yeah. Because I've had cases like that where a man just feels she doesn't respect me. And you ask the woman, Pastor, I respect him. You don't ask yourself, where is the respect? <laughs> you need to just find out why, why she's acting like that and what the husband also is meaning by respect. Sometimes the woman is just talking to you, but because you have a, like, praise, a cultural mindset, you have a way, but um, you know, it's good for him to feel respected. So whatever she needs to uh, adapt uh, yes, to, yes. to make him feel respected, respected yes. it's very important. Yes. Okay. So we need to find out why. Why is she not respecting you? Is it sometimes, you know, some women are fighting something else, not you. Like I said, most times, you know, it's not what is going on that is the problem. You need to backtrack and find out why. Why is it? Why is, this, why is she sounding like this? Has she been dealt with badly from men? Have authority figures in her life dealt with her? So she's not even fighting you. She's just fighting all the men that has been in her life, her father, her pastor, or whatever. So you need to make sure you get to the root of it and understand why she's doing uh, that. One thing that has helped us is uh, crucial conversations. Times when we talk. She's quieter. I may be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when we have conversations and she talks for a long time, and Chris talked about communication, I feel, I mean, if you're here with your spouse or your spouse is watching or listening, you need to do that between now and next week where you sit down and talk. Let the man, uh, in a non-threatening way, express to your wife that I, I don't feel respected. And then she will tell you why. And then you, you can mention some, she'll mention, I mean, you mention some, some situations where, you know, and then you can speak to it. Don't just assume and close the thing. A lot of men don't know how to have conversations with a woman. We can either shout or we conclude or we just react. Many don't have the patience of sitting down. And, and, and it's painful. It's very painful that you can't sit down and talk for like an hour. Let her express herself. Let, and the same thing with the children. If that happens periodically, if possible, schedule it. A lot of stuff will be resolved. Things that look mysterious will be, you know, you, you decipher it. You, you, you'll be able to, you know, uh, run through it and, and sort it out. A lot of things that you misunderstood that she said or that she responded to might not even be like that at all. And then you, you, you'll be better off. A lot has to do with talking. And nobody can do it for you. Many want their pastors to do it for them. Uh, talk to her or talk to him. Mm. No, you have, to talk, you have to talk to your wife or to your husband. And please, it's not a conference. Yeah. You know, sit down here. I've had cases where a woman says, he wants to talk, but the way he wants to talk, I can't talk. Sit down here, sit down here, let's talk now. <laughs> ah, that's not talk. <laughs> she just says, okay, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Non-threatening. Let it let 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 that be a person that God created and sent to you and open up. Okay, don't accuse, don't condemn, yes. don't judge. Yes. At the end of the hour, you will be apologizing to each other, and you're better off for it. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I hope we are good this afternoon. Let's rise yeah. up on our feet. Um, Pastor Kinsley, I think you should just pray for uh, us. Uh, we're going to go on a break, like 20, 20 to twenty-five minutes, twenty minutes break. We have some vendors out there. You can chat with people. Pastor Godman will be talking about, um, I asked him to do baby steps in, uh, when it comes to finances in church because most people have to just start afresh, mm. you know, baby steps and so much to learn. And then um, David Oedepo Jr. will be speaking. And then we have Q&A with praise. And then we'll go home today. Tomorrow is also extremely loaded. Can we just, can we just pray? Father, we thank you. Thank you for your men and women 
that have gathered here. Thank you for this great conference. Lord, we speak that you will grant us the wisdom it will take to have global impact. Amen. The wisdom it will take to reach our world. Amen. The wisdom it will take to navigate the next generation. Amen. And Lord, we speak homes. Amen. We decree that there will be intimacy. Amen. The foundation will be solidified. Amen. Lord, you say what you have joined together, nothing shall put asunder. Amen. We come against any interference, come against any distractions. Amen. We decree, Lord, our unions will grow deeper. It will get sweeter in the name of Jesus. Thank you because our ministries will be renewed and refreshed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise Amen. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for PK. Thank you, sir.